Let me show you how to replace the lock cylinder in a mid-2000s Buick. First step is a good idea to always disconnect the battery. We're going to be turning the key to the run position and also the crank position, but we really don't want the car to start while we're in the middle of the process. So uh, in this case, we've disconnected the battery. Sometimes I've also set the parking brake and put the vehicle in drive or reverse so the, the car's not actually going to start when I rotate the key. But today we've disconnected the battery. We've installed our key. Now I'm going to rotate to the run position. I take my 90 degree pick and insert it into the hole in the top of the steering column here. Now I'm going to rotate the key to the crank position, press my pick in, and release the locking tab. That's all there is to it. I've got my original lock cylinder out. Now our new lock cylinder comes with no key and with no coating. So what we're going to need to do is refer to our lock cylinder video on how to recode a lock cylinder. That's going to walk you through the step-by-step -step procedure of removing the old coating slugs from your original lock cylinder, transferring them to our new lock cylinder, and we're going to use the new retainer clips and springs that came with our new lock cylinder. What that's going to allow us to do is reuse our original key in our new lock cylinder, and that's, that's important for a couple reasons. First off, you don't need a new key. Second off, this particular GM product is equipped with what's called a pass key 3 theft system. You can tell by the PK3 stamping on the blade of the key. We'll also notice the pass key 3 module here on the steering column. How the system works essentially is there's a chip inside of this key. When you insert the key into the lock cylinder, it wakes up, sends a signal to the pass key 3 module. Now because they've already been learned or mated or introduced to each other, it recognizes this as a valid key, passes that information along to the body control module and the engine control module, so the vehicle will crank and start. If we use the incorrect key, the vehicle may either not crank or it will start and stall after two seconds. So it's important to use a properly learned key. Well, once we've transferred our stuff over to our new lock cylinder, we simply plug it back in and we're good to go. We don't have to do any relearn procedure or anything like that because we're using the original key yet. If we were going to use a new key, let's say you went to the store and had it cloned or a new key cut, we're going to have to learn it to the system. And that's not that difficult either. Put the battery, or hook the battery back up, turn the key to the run position or just beyond run a little bit, get the security lamp to flash. That'll do that for about 10 minutes. After that 10 minute waiting period, shut the key to the off position for 30 seconds and sometimes the car will start after that first 10 minute procedure. However, most of these pass key 3 vehicles, it's necessary to do that procedure three times. So you're going to wait for about a total of a half hour. 10 minutes on, 30 seconds off, 10 on, 30 seconds off, 10 on, 30 seconds off again, and the vehicle will start to run. However, because we're using the original key here today, we don't have to worry about relearning it. We can simply put our upper and lower covers back on, hook up the battery again, and we're good to go with our brand new lock cylinder.